Hey everybody, I'm Brian with Fort Knox Company and I'm gonna show you how to install these AFCI breakers the right way. We'll start with installing one of these AFCIs that have the pigtail. We're gonna strip our wire and then get this set up. Whenever we're stripping our wire, we wanna leave a little bit of the casing on the inside of the panel. We'll just do a light little score. Then we can pull it off. Break back all the paper. Expose our ground. I like to land the ground first. So I'll bring this over here into the back of the panel. And I'll bring it over here to there. Tighten that down. When I'm wiring all this, I am gonna to try to be a little neat with it. So I like to tuck all my grounds all the way in the back and run them in the corner. And then I'll run my neutrals and my hot wires above those. Now we're gonna start wiring this in. I like to take the pigtails because they are stranded wire. I'll take my linemen's and just kind of tidy up the wire so that they'll fit into this neutral bar. This pigtail is gonna go into the neutral bar then our neutral wire for our circuit is going to go into the back on the silver and our hot wire as usual is going to go over here to the gold so that's the only thing different with these afci breakers is that either the plug on or the pigtail goes to the actual neutral bar our wires both go into the breaker Once we have the pigtail secured to the neutral bar, we can rock this in. Then we'll land our neutral and our hot to the back of the breaker. Now this is where it might get kind of hard. You might not want to actually secure this down first because we're gonna tuck these wires again off to the side and I'm gonna land this into the back. But you can see right here, I'm working in very confined space. It's gonna be really hard to get this in there um, without a lot of working room. So I might want to take my measurement first so I know where I'm going to be landing these wires. I could do the same thing with my hot. I'm going to be bringing it back here and I just bend it with my finger and I know that I'm going to be landing it right there. Then I can come back and strip what I need. Then I'll actually pull this off so I can get some better working room. And I can feed this into the back. Then it's a lot easier to get your screwdriver in here. Same thing for the hot. Remember, neutral goes to the silver. The hot goes to the gold. Now both of these are in, and again, I will come back in here, get the back end, and rock it into place. These have enough slack in them. They're secured, they're tight. Our pigtail goes to the neutral bar. Our neutral wire goes to the silver. Our hot wire goes to the gold. And that is how you wire in the pigtails. Now let me show you how you wire in the plugged in version. These right here are essentially the exact same type of breaker, but instead of connecting a pigtail, when you rock it on, this grabs the neutral bar. So you can actually rock it in, pop it on, and it grabs the neutral bar on the back. So now all you have to do is connect your wire. Same thing as I'm gonna run my wire so I know where to cut them in place. And the same thing on the back, white to the silver, hot on top. It also tells you on here, we'll pop the, bar off first. It also tells you on here your load and then your hot wire. It tells you how much to strip, but these are a little bit more convenient because you don't have to mess with that pigtail. And you can also see it takes up a little bit of room in here. 
So you have to connect that before anything else because you might start running out of room as you're bringing all those pigtails around for the next breakers. So I like to install the pigtail first and then actually set the breaker over top of where it's connected. But let's go ahead and wire this in and see if it's a little bit easier. So I have everything stripped back. With this, I'll do the exact same thing is land my ground first. Bring my ground and I'll tuck it back here in the back. I'll run it here, just bend it with my finger. And this is where, again, I'll actually put my breaker in first. I'll pop it in and then I'll run my lines cut them to where I want them. By tucking these back, it also allows me to have a little bit of slack inside the panel. Tuck this up and back, run it along the back, bend it with my finger. Then we can strip back what we need. And then let's try to land this without taking the breaker off. It is pretty hard. It's not impossible, but you're definitely gonna save yourself a little bit of time and frustration if you remove the breaker first. A lot of times if I am working in a confined space, I'll grab some needle nose. And that way I can control my wire like that. I can push it in all the way, and then I can come in here and tighten it down. Landing the hot wire is a little bit easier. We have a little bit more room to work with. And that's it. You can see I have my hot, my neutral, hot and neutral. The pigtail does take up some more room. So if we look at it from here, we have our hot and our neutral going to the back of the breaker. This top one has the pigtail, so you can see that it does take up a little bit more room. But if I wanna pop these off, just pull it out. This is essentially how it's wired in the back. And I do like cutting the wires first, then pulling this off and securing them because then you can hold on to this. You're not torquing it while you're trying to screw it down. You can hold on to it, screw it down, make sure that all the wires are seated properly. And then again, we can come in here, pop it on the neutral bar, pop it on our load. And then we're grabbed onto the neutral, like the pigtail, and we have our hot and our neutral in the back of the breaker. And to finish it off, I like to cut a little piece of the wire here and label them so if I ever pull the panel off, I can see which circuit these go to. And then also when I'm labeling the panel at the end and I want to mark what each circuit is, I have it all written out here. So I'll do different codes like G2, G1, um, GYM1. I try to make it short. Another thing is I'll actually mark inside the boxes. So if I'm ever working on this, I know that this G1 goes over here to G1. So another way to kind of just tidy up your work, keep everything nice and neat. And I really believe that it goes a long way with the inspectors. If they see you doing this, they know that you're taking pride in your work and you're paying attention to detail. So they might not look with a fine microscope over everything. So any little things you might have added or maybe that weren't in the plans that you wanted to kind of do might not fall under too much scrutiny because they're looking at this and seeing that you're being very careful and professional. So I hope that wasn't too confusing, but I know if you are doing any of these wirings, you might see these two different styles of breakers. You might even see the small traditional styles like you'll see right here. These little ones, these are your regular ones, but these are all dedicated outlets and they have a GFCI as the very first outlet, so they are protected. When you can't put a GFCI outlet, like these are going to different light fixtures, that is the GFCI. So it's AFCI, Arc Fault Interrupter. This is your breaker, your safety before your breaker, and you have your two different ways to plug it in or put the pigtail. I like this one because it does save time. These do cost a little bit more money, depending on where you can get them. You might be able to get them on sale, but you can find them at the box stores. You will notice a price difference. These are 
anywhere between $35 to $50 a piece. And if you go for the traditional breakers, five, six, 10, maybe $15. So there is a price difference, but this is what code currently requires. That way we can have a ground fault interrupter or an arc fault interrupter in all of our circuits, whether it's a light fixture or actual plugs, everything's protected. So I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'm really good at getting back to all those. I love helping you guys work through any problems, but I just wanted to share that information with you. I've been seeing a lot of these now in new home installations. It's pretty much required across the board. So I would still check your state and local codes, but here in Nevada, that's what they require. Every single circuit has to have an AFCI or a GFCI. And if you haven't already, please hit the like button. Really helps me out. I appreciate it. Consider subscribing if you want to learn more stuff like this. I do everything on electrical, plumbing, even underground gas lines, all the way up to finished work and renovation. So if you're interested in that, please consider subscribing. Thank you again. I appreciate it all. And I'll see you on the next build.